Hi, this is Charlie Montatuella with another video from Blue Bear Flutes. Today what we're going to be doing is making a turtle totem uh, for flute. This is one that's not completely finished yet, made out of red cedar. And uh, I have kind of a special piece of wood that some friends of mine, some uh, people that are not only in the state that I live in, but also uh, fellow flute makers and watch all of our videos, that kind of thing, they had asked if I would make them some turtle totems. And I said, well, why not? Let's make a video about it. So uh, this piece of wood, I know it looks very familiar to maybe a lot of woodworkers out there. It's yellow. It's not something I'm going to start offering flutes in, so <laughs> quit looking for it on the website. Uh, but anyway, um, it's a beautiful piece of wood that's native to Alabama. It's called Chittim wood. And um, it's a very yellow with some very unusual red and blue lines in it. Really kind of a neat, neat piece of wood to make a totem out of. Uh, but we're going to make a couple of turtle totems for my friends today and uh, you know it's really simple something that doesn't have to go on the top of a flute if you just wanted a little wooden turtle to carve out uh, of course as always you can find the design the little printout that you can use with carbon paper on top of a piece of wood or whatever you're going to carve it out of um, you can find that on our website on our info page info anyway so uh, come take a look at this we'll get started okay so the first thing i'm going to do is trace out my little pattern here, and of course you guys will have the convenience of a paper version of this pattern from my website, bluebearflutes.com, once again found on our info, I-N-F-O page, and we're just basically tracing this out. If you use the carbon paper version of it, you'll just basically print out the picture of the turtle blocks, and there's several different sizes in case you need a different size. You'll uh, print that out and then get a piece of carbon paper, usually quite easy to find. Um, and from that point, you'll lay the carbon paper down on the wood, put the template on top of it, and then you can just kind of carefully trace the template and pull it up and you have a duplicate of it underneath. For a lot of reasons, it's very convenient that way. Um, for us, when we make uh, like one run of a totem, we might use that method. because we'll not be printing a, a lot of those out or not need to cut a lot of them out. And uh, for ones that we make all the time, like this turtle, for example, or like any of the others that we've made videos on, a lot of those are common totems that we make. Um, we usually cut out a wooden stencil like this for this reason. And then we make thousands of them, <laughs> or at least it seems like it almost on a daily basis. Anyway, let's go over to the saw and cut this guy. Now, depending on what level of depth you want this little guy to be, if you want him to have a really high raised back or if you want him to extend you know, quite a ways down or what have you, you may want to stop right here. Sometimes I make them even thinner than this. It just depends on what I feel like and how I want the turtle to look. But uh, the next thing I'm going to do is shape his edges uh, so that we can get kind of an idea of his level of depth that I'm actually telling you about right now. And then we'll do the rest of it with a rotary tool. I do like to round them off a little underneath. You may want to leave them flat. It just depends on how you feel about it. Just gives them a little bit more depth under there, making them a little more believable. 
and he has kind of a square on his back, but I think I want to make that more of an octagon or a hexagon or something. Uh, I guess in his case it's going to have to be an octagon, but, uh, but anyway, we'll just kind of round those corners off. And if you look at it, he's actually almost complete here. It's uh, really shaping up to be a nice looking little turtle. So uh, I'm going to take care of his feet and then I'll take the rotary tool and do the rest of it by hand. Okay, so what we have here is a little shaped up turtle. And the only other thing he really needs, and I had begun on this one, or Jesse might have begun on it, uh, is shaping up his legs and his tail and his head because uh, right now they're all on the same level as his body is and that isn't very convincing as a uh, turtle goes and uh, so we're going to do that with a rotary tool and I think that should have it mostly taken care of and then maybe a little hand sanding just to So I think you can see this pretty good. Um, what I did was I took the level of the wood down just a little bit at the point of his legs and his tail. And on his head here I cut it kind of an angle because I like to think of him as having his head poking up and out. Um, so, so far so good. I mean this is just the easiest totem to make and it turns out really beautiful I think. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom to give it just a little bit more level of depth and then I'm probably going to hand sand some of this so that the color and everything matches up a little bit and maybe take a little bit off the top here so that it's a little um, shinier and has a little bit finer finish to it. I think that's about got it. One thing you want to do whenever you make something like this and you think about the different levels that you're cutting out, you want to uh, be sure that each item that's on that level is as precisely on that level as you can possibly make it. Um, as I was getting towards the end I realized that my sanding drum is a little bit on the dull side uh, so I need to change that out and it probably would have done a much cleaner job. And some of you may even use fine sanding drums, which will do an excellent job, but you have to take your time and spend a little more time doing that kind of thing than what we have time for. <laughs> so we usually do it with the hand sanding paper from this point. And I think it does a good job. Adds a little bit of a nice finished touch to it when you do something by hand like that. It also gives you the opportunity to clean up in between on your cuts because once again since we make so many of our flutes and totems and everything we're not in a hurry necessarily but we do try to find quicker ways to do this. Um, a slow way to cut this out would be to go sit and watch turtles for 24 hours and carve it out with a pocket knife so just to give you an, a comparison contrast. Uh, but uh, using a, a coarse scroll saw blade allowed me to cut this out much faster than a fine scroll saw blade would have. However, um, having to come back and clean up the cuts and everything takes a little time, but with my experience with scroll saw blades, I think that's probably the best. We use that scroll saw a lot for a cutoff saw. I know I've said it in several of my videos, we probably should go back to using a bandsaw again. I mean, I grew up using a bandsaw. My dad used it for everything. And there would be days he would have cypress knees out on that bandsaw, and I would uh, get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and go out, move all the cypress knees off of the bandsaw just to cut uh, some frozen deer leg or something that he had in the freezer so I could have some breakfast.
<laughs> we used to use that bandsaw for everything. And Dad went through about, I don't know, four or five of them that I remember. Big bandsaws, huge ones. You could cut things that are two feet in diameter on them. Which is not safe, but we did it. And that's one side. This guy here is really shaping up. I like this wood. And when you start working on something like this, you find some techniques that you think to yourself, you know, maybe I don't want to, you know, sand it so much in this area because this little black line where my sanding drum was burning kind of gives it a nice little accent there. So, once again, reflecting back on something my dad always said, six of one and half a dozen of another. <laughs> I don't know how many times I say that per video. Maybe one day should we, we should count it. One thing I will show you about sanding with regards to the lines that you see, these what we call uh, our grind lines. And grind lines, uh, they do a good job sometimes of showing you the definition or give you an idea of how something is really being or what have you. If I go back with my sandpaper over the top of them, if I do it too much, those grind lines will pretty much disappear because I may not be as articulate as my belt sander is in shaping them. So if we want to get the roughness off, we've got to kind of just do it a little bit, not too much. And then make sure you hit those other four angles, once again, as precisely as you possibly can doing this by hand. So this is one turtle totem down. I promised them I was going to send them two, so I've still got to go back and make another one. But this is a really great little totem here. Turned out kind of cute, I think, and, and I like the yellow. Yellow is a really special color to some of us. Like blue is, of course, a very special color. Uh, what I'll do next, I know many of you have probably seen me do and you probably remember, um, is I'll go in and with a like a 3 8 uh, drill bit we use for just about everything, a Forstner bit. I'll drill a hole in his belly and then we'll have a square piece that we'll drill into that he'll mount on top of con connecting the two with a dowel. That way when you tie it on a flute, if that's what you're using this for, uh, you can tie the leather on and it'll look like he's actually sitting on the leather. And some of you think, well why has that turtle got his legs poking out like that? Well, uh, many of you may not have seen a whole lot of turtles in a while, but they, they like to do this thing that makes them look like they're flying. I don't know why they do it other than the fact that maybe they're really thinking they're flying in their mind, but they'll hold their legs out like that and balance their body on top of the bottom of the shell and uh, they'll just hold their wings out. And there's times that they actually look like they're flying and make some movements with their arms and what have you. We've had pet turtles and we have turtles in our pond and, and uh, turtles everywhere that we've paid attention to. And so that's why we like to make it like that. Of course, you know, you can make it any which way where his legs wrap over, or you can make him more of a land tortoise and have his legs coming down. There is no limit to what you can do. And uh, like I say, this is just a great start. So I will have a picture up of the finished product with the little base underneath of it. However, that part of the video you guys have seen time and time again. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if it's completely necessary. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video on making a turtle totem. Uh, this is for Native American flutes or for whatever. And uh, come back and see us again really soon. We always have a lot of more uh, flute making videos coming up and more uh, totem making videos as well, as well as some videos on playing and everything else. And please visit us on our website, which is bluebearflutes.com. Blue like the color, bear like the animal, and flutes like what you're looking at. Uh, bluebearflutes.com or on Facebook you can find us there just the same and uh, you know feel free to ask questions or whatever you know we like to see the flutes that everyone else makes too so I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video Charlie Montatuella signing out and uh, we hope to see you again really soon